Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the ASUS eBook X205, which is a thin, light, and inexpensive laptop. Sells for about $200, weighs about 2.2 pounds, and measures just about 0.7 inches thick. It's sort of the spiritual successor in a lot of ways to the ASUS e PC line of netbooks that started back in 2007. Netbooks are kind of out of fashion these days, but this, uh, another way to think of this might be as a competitor to a Chromebook, but it runs the full Windows 8.1 operating system. It's actually Windows 8.1 with Bing, but for all uh, intents and purposes, it's pretty much the same as Windows 8.1, which means that you can run full desktop applications. Now, there are a couple of limitations to consider. It only has two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigs of storage. So again, it's more like a Chromebook than a typical laptop. Uh, and the storage and the RAM are not actually user upgradable. There are some screws down here on the bottom. You can take these off and remove the panel and access the battery if you wanted to try to replace the battery, although good luck finding a replacement battery. But the, um, the memory and storage are soldered to the motherboard. But it's a compact machine, it's an inexpensive machine, and for $200 it can do almost anything that you would want to do with a Windows PC. It uh, handles web browsing well, it can run office applications. Uh, you're just not going to want to store your entire music or movie collection on here because 32 gigs is just not a lot of storage. Let's take a quick look at some of the hardware. We've got a headset jack, micro HDMI, micro SDXC, so you can use removable storage. Now it's not going to take full-size SD card slots uh, or SD cards, so if you wanted to just pop a card out of your camera and copy some pictures over here, you're going to need to make sure that your camera has a micro SDXC card slot. Um, and with that micro HDMI adapter, you're going to need a micro HDMI cable instead of a full-size one. Now there are two full-size USB 2.0 ports, so you can plug in a keyboard, a mouse, USB flash drive, other peripherals, and there's a power adapter here, which is a tiny little thing that works with a tiny little power adapter. Looks more like a smartphone charger than a typical laptop power brick. So fairly compact, easy to carry with you. It's not micro USB, so it's not uh, the same thing as your phone uses most likely. It is a proprietary charger, but it is uh, fairly portable and just as easy to carry with you as the laptop itself because it's small and light. Um, you might not need to carry that around with you all the time because the laptop does get around 10 hours of battery life in my tests and it wants us to sign up for web storage, uh, which is a cloud storage service offered by ASUS. Um, so ASUS says that it should get around 12 hours of battery life. In my test, 10 seems more reasonable, but that's still pretty much all day battery life, depending on what it is that you're using the laptop to do. Um, the keyboard is... Uh, well, it's got an 11.6 inch screen, so there's room for an almost full-size keyboard here. Some of the keys are a little small, like the arrow keys here, but for the most part, I haven't had any problems typing. The touchpad is nice and large and wide, and it supports multi-touch gestures. So, for instance, um, we can use two fingers to scroll up and down. Uh, there's also support for edge gestures, so we can scroll from this side to switch between applications or the other side to bring up the Windows Charm menu, which usually works. There it goes. Uh, worked better right before I decided to start this demo. And in terms of performance, as I mentioned, it does have an Intel Atom Bay Trail quad-core processor. Um, Atom chips sort of have a reputation for not being the fastest processors around, and, you know, it's, it's not the fastest processor, but it's reasonably fast and lets you um, surf the web with multiple browser tabs open. I've had no problems streaming video from Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, and YouTube, among other places. So let's go ahead and uh, fire up a 720p video here. And that's just because that happens to be what I shoot in. You can also do 1080p videos. Now the viewing angles on the screen is an 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 pixel glossy display. It's not a touchscreen display, but it is glossy, which means that you'll get a little bit of glare if you're using it in a window uh, or by a window or by a bright light. But you'll also notice that if you tilt it back too far, the colors can start to look a little washed out or almost like photo negatives. And the same thing can happen when you're viewing it from certain angles on the side. So viewing angles are a little bit less than stellar, but when viewed from sort of head on, it works pretty well. And again, have I mentioned that this is a $200 laptop? Uh, multitasking works pretty well. I've uh, regularly had a dozen or so browser tabs open while I'm working. 
It can uh, handle uh, fairly resource intensive tasks like the GIMP photo image editing application. And while that's loading, let's go ahead and load up Abbey Word, which is a word processor. Um, this machine does come with a trial version of Microsoft Office, but unlike some inexpensive small Windows laptops, it doesn't come with Office 365. Uh, it does, or at least the, the version that ASUS sent me to review, does come with a um, uh, code that you can use to get 100 gigabytes of online storage for free for two years with Microsoft Cloud Drive, as well as that ASUS web storage software. Uh, so you can see we've got image editing capabilities here. We've got, uh, let's go ahead and load up a picture. So we can you know, edit that, crop it, resize it, add effects and so forth, and that works just fine in GIMP. Um, more CPU intensive tasks like uh, video transcoding or audio transcoding are definitely doable, but they won't be as fast on, uh, I can't type one talk at the same time, on a machine like this as they would be on a more powerful computer. So it is a full Windows machine, it just doesn't have a lot of storage. And in fact, if you look at the storage, you'll note that after installing a couple of apps, running a couple of benchmarks, having a couple of video files on here, among other things, I've only got about four gigs of free disk space. Uh, that's down from about 14 from the out-of-the-box experience. So when I first turned this on, before I had installed any applications or copied any files, uh, it had about 14 gigabytes of storage. So if you're looking for something to store your entire music or, or movie collection on, this isn't necessarily going to be the best machine for you. But if you have all that stuff uploaded to the cloud, it's sort of an alternative to something like an inexpensive Google Chromebook. You can still stream videos from the internet, you can access your music collection from Google Play uh, Music or from uh, Spotify or what have you, but then you can also run Microsoft Office, GIMP, Abbey Word, Firefox, uh, all sorts of different applications. So it's a nice machine for $200. Uh, if you want to spend a little bit more money, you can get something with a better display, you can get something that probably has sturdier build quality, you can get something that has more storage, but for $200, it's pretty impressive, especially considering a couple of years ago when netbooks were new, they tended to sell for $400 and they were not nearly as capable as this. Uh, if you wanted to do more than just one Windows, you can sort of get it to run Ubuntu. Uh, I haven't gone real far in that direction, but you can find more details at lilliputing.com showing how to load it at least. Wi-Fi wasn't working out of the box and I had to use a 32-bit bootloader with a 64-bit version of the operating system. It's a little bit clunky, but it is theoretically possible. And this is not the only machine of its type that's available. HP has a $200 laptop, uh, Acer has a $200 laptop, and there are some sort of different features for different ones. But in terms of overall what you get for $200 here, you get a machine that is perfectly usable, does a pretty good job of running Windows software, handles HD video playback, uh, can run CPU and GPU intensive tasks, just not as fast as a more expensive machine, and uh, it's compact and gets long battery life. So there's a lot to like about the ASUS uh, eBook X205. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and you can find more details, photos, and benchmark results, among other things, at lilliputing.com.